Hello, hello, friends. How are you? Welcome to the video where we are covering the reading from the 3rd of January. So today we're reading Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, all the way to chapter 6, verse 22, and Psalm chapter 2, verse 7 to 12, Proverbs 1, verse 7, and Matthew 3, uh, verse 1 to 17. Amazing things that we are seeing <coughs> as we read the word of God. Excuse me. We're in Genesis chapter 5. And there we are. It says, um, these are the family records of the descendants of Adam. On the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Can you note that? He created them, male and female. When they were, cre were created, he blessed them and he called them men. Now, verse 3, listen to this. Adam was 130 years old when he fathered a child in his likeness according to his image. <laughs> Can you see how the matrix has changed now? Man is now in the image of Adam. So something huge has been lost. We are, uh, man has been thrown into a place of weakness to be in his own image. Yet there was just an amazing opportunity to be like God and it's still there. That opportunity, you can regain that place, that likeness of God by receiving Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and growing in the knowledge of God and growing in living your life of holiness and separation. Now men were in the likeness of Adam. Oh, what a loss. What a loss, guys. What a loss. Now, uh, interesting things that we can never miss out um, on. Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Enoch walked with God and he was not there because God took him. Oh, how much I pray that you and I will walk with God. I want to walk with God in this year, 2023. Uh, going forward, uh, for these 300 years, Enoch was consistent in walking with God such that when the time came, God took him. And that's a picture of how it's going to be at the end if you are consistent and we, you and I continue in that path. We continue to follow the Lord as our personal Lord and Savior and you and I will eventually just be taken home with him and we will be no more. We will behold him in the clouds and you're coming. Oh, that's such such a glorious thing. So, so glorious. And so something quite interesting came across um, to me. Do you know, I had never paid attention to who Noah's father was. I had always looked at Noah himself and how Noah was righteous and, and, and Noah found favor with God and stuff like that. But I'd never looked at his father. Did you notice that as you read um, today, you, you, you realize that Noah's father was Lamech. And guess who Lamech is? Lamech is this guy who becomes the first polygamist in the Bible. He took two wives, Ada and Zillah. And then he is a double murderer. We've had, um, uh, you know, Cain killing someone. But Lamech is confessing to his wife that, you know what, I killed a man um, uh, for wounding me and a young man for striking me. He got so mad that someone injured him and he killed that person. And the young man struck him. I don't know what kind of striking happened there, but he is confessing to killing. He says, if Cain um, should be avenged seven times, then for Lamech it should be 77 times. This is the father of Noah, the righteous man. So I made a note today that if you pursue righteousness, there is no way that the spirits from your lineage or whatever uh, bloodline issues can follow you because you're following righteousness. Look at that. So close. Noah did not become anywhere close to his father. He could have also decided to take two wives. He could have also killed some people, but he was righteous. Scripture is clear. Listen to this. Let me read it as is. It says, Noah, verse 9 of chapter 6, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among his contemporaries. Noah walked with God. Can you see that? He walked with God and therefore he was blameless. Um, he was blameless. He was righteous. And among his contemporaries, he was set apart because he walked with God. Are you walking with God so that you are different from the others? Definitely, I desire that for myself. Um, verse 11 of chapter 6 says, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight. The earth was corrupt in God's sight. And I was saying, mm, 
scripture then tells us that like in the days of Noah, uh, Matthew chapter 24 says like in the days of Noah, um, people were eating and drinking and they were marrying and giving in marriage, but they were still um, corrupt in God's sight. There are things that we might accept and we are seeing uh, in your life or in our lives and it's acceptable. But is that exactly acceptable among humans? But is it acceptable to God? Something that we must constantly think about and focus on. Uh, verse 13, and then Noah say, and then God said to Noah, imagine in all that uh, uh, filth and whatever, God said to Noah. Mm. And then verse 18 says, said, I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark with your sons, your wife and your son's wives. Oh man, our homes are becoming the arcs of salvation. This is what I posted <coughs> on our church group, that our homes are becoming the arcs of salvation. That people, we are going to have our families on board with us in serving God. We are going to have our families on board with us in loving God. We are not leaving anyone behind. And then God says um, uh, to Noah, carry enough food for everyone. So pack up for year 2023. Pack up in the word. The food that we're looking at there is the word of God. Pack up, pack up, pack up so that you do not get hungry along the way. Now Psalm 2 verse 7 to 12 and I'll pick up on other things as well that I met you chapter 3. Did you see in verse 7 how God says, you are my son today, I've become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. And then he carries on promising his son. So he says, you are my son today, I have begotten you. And we saw that same statement in, in Matthew chapter 3, that was so intriguing to find that God speaks and he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased. And my version says, I take delight in him. So he takes delight that whatever Jesus asks for, God will answer and he will grant it. May that be my portion. May that be your portion in this way that God will surely, truly confirm that you are his son and he is well uh, pleased with you. Praise the Lord. So verse 11 says, Serve the Lord with reverential awe and rejoice with trembling. I, I thought this was quite something else. It's a format, a formula on how we ought to serve God. And uh, Proverbs 1, 7 will tell us clearly the fear of the, fear of the Lord, the reverential fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So we want to honor God in reverential fear. Wow, so, something that stood out again for me this time around um, Matthew chapter 3 verse 6 and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins you know confessing our sins is such a big key to deliverance is such a big key towards um, being set free by God confess your sins one to another find a trusted person that you can confess to and get baptized and turn your life around before I close, did you see the Trinity there? The Father, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together united at the Jordan River. Um, and they are united in your heart. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he promises that my Father and I will come and indwell. May God bless you as you walk in your path. See you tomorrow as we talk about the 4th of January. Blessings.